So today we're visiting Malborg Castle, which is the largest castle by land area in the world, oddly enough. So let's have a little look around and explore what we can see here. In this video, we're going to explore Malborg Castle, a medieval castle and fortress situated in northeastern Poland that was built in the 13th century. It is both enchanting and mystifying at the same time. So come with us as we explore this fascinating place. We travelled from Gdansk to the town of Malborg via train. We took the fast train taking just under half an hour. And whilst on the train, you can see the stunning castle and its imposing size come into view. From Malborg train station, the castle can be reached in approximately a 15 minute walk. We visited on a Monday and this meant that the interior parts of the castle weren't open. But that didn't mean that the castle isn't worth visiting. All of the outdoor areas were open in what is called the Green Route and the tickets are cheaper as a result. It's 30 zloty to enter or £6 and included in that price you also get a free audio guide as demonstrated by me here. An absolutely brilliant price and well worth it for what you're able to enjoy. To enter into the castle grounds, you need to cross the bridge that passes over the dry moat. Once you pass through a grand entranceway, you're then treated to a grand vista of the castle itself. It is here where you can see a photograph of what the castle looked like in 1945. More than half of the castle was destroyed, but the castle has been in reconstruction since 1962. Welcome to the entrance to the castle. The first part of the castle that you come to is the lower castle. The walls and drawbridges that can be found here were vital so as to protect the integrity of the castle. So this castle is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site as well. It's one of only two in northeastern Poland, so it's definitely well worth a visit. The lower castle is the smallest part of the castle in terms of land size. It was primarily designed so as to protect the other parts of the castle. And once you've finished in this area, you will then pass through to what is known as the middle castle. To get here, you'll pass through a series of large gates and bridges, and you'll see out into a large courtyard. And it's from here that you can get a good vantage point of the many towers, moats, and hidden gems that can be found within the castle. The middle castle houses the representative and administrative buildings of the Teutonic Order. We'll have a look at the Teutonic Knights in more detail shortly, but the Teutonic Order is a Catholic religious institution founded as a military society in 1190. The Order was formed to aid Christians on their pilgrimages to the Holy Land and to establish hospitals. And within this area of the castle, rooms were available for guests of the Order and other crusaders to stay. It's also in this area that the Grand Master's Palace can be found. So this is known as a Teutonic castle, and these are actually the masters of the Teutonic knights. These knights will have fought in the Crusades, which was right up my street, especially as Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is my favourite movie. The knights still exist today, though their work is now focused on charity rather than military conquests. We're getting close to entering the High Castle, the grandest part of the castle complex. But first, we take a walk along the dry moat. It is from here that you can see the size and scope of the building. It really was a feat of engineering and architecture. From here, we then step into a small chapel, which houses the graves of many of the knights who had died. In here, you can see some beautiful stained glass windows, and on the outside of the chapel, you can marvel at the stunning stonework motifs depicting different religious scenes and imagery. As you carry on, you'll be able to walk through some more courtyards and gardens. 
you might also be able to see some of the new residents of the castle, who have replaced the knights. The last part of the middle castle that we toured, before entering the high castle, was the west courtyard. This is a small sheltered courtyard situated near the Grand Master's Palace. It's a quiet, serene area. There is also a mill within this courtyard that you can explore. After we passed over another drawbridge, we are into the High Castle, the oldest part of the castle complex. You can purchase a separate ticket if you want to climb up to the top of the tower that is located here. As an interesting fact, the well in the middle of the courtyard was situated here so that the Teutonic Knights would still have access to water in the event of a siege. Heading upstairs, and we can see more examples of beautiful stained glass windows. Turning around, we also get to see the cloisters that line the passageways in and around the church that was constructed here in 1344. On the outside of the church itself, we found more stone motifs depicting Bible passages. Here, it shows the parable of the ten virgins, depicting the five wise ones who were ready and waiting for the bridegroom, and the five foolish ones who were unprepared. We now took a long walk down quite a gloomy passageway. This passageway led us to the bathing areas for the knights, but this also acted as a protection. The knights could hide in the depths of the castle if they suddenly found themselves under attack. Anyone fancy using a medieval toilet? No toilet paper here, only cabbage leaves. Don't lock me in. Once I managed to get out, it was back outside for a walk around the walls that make up the high castle. And it's from this vantage point that you can see the interconnecting bridges, gates and rooms that make up this impressive building. You can also see the height of the church and the size of the Madonna statue that adorns the front of the building. A plaque commemorating the visit of the German Kaiser in 1895 can also be found embedded in the wall, and as you walk further, you'll see masonry and stonework lining the path, this being evidence of the damage that was caused by the Red Army in 1945 to end the Second World War. Now, as we almost bring an end to our tour of Malbork Castle, we see more evidence of the fortifications and protections put in place to protect the security of the castle and its inhabitants. The audio guide on the green route will take approximately one and a half to two hours to complete, but thanks to the inbuilt GPS, it knows exactly where you are, so you can take the tour at your own pace. Then, the tour will finish with a stunning view of the size and scope of the Grand Master's Palace, the jewel in the crown of Malbolg Castle. Hey guys, so just finished the tour of Malbolg Castle, definitely well worth it. If you're in Poland, if you're in Gdansk, get down here, it's absolutely brilliant. I've been Mike the Traveling Scouser, you have been awesome. Catch you next time, ciao for now.